Warshaw, and I'm the founder um, of BAX, and I am the outgoing executive artistic director. Um, Loma McGregor will be joining us in just a moment. There she is. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> who is our artistic director? Um, so she'll be joining us. And several current artists in residence will also be joining us that um, when we get to our question and answer part of this session might be very helpful to you. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to quickly just go around the circle so we know who we're sitting in the room with. Um, and just your name and your pronouns, and then we'll jump in. So, you want to start? Yes. Um, my name is Lisa. She, her, hers. Hers. Yes. <laughs> she, her, hers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Molly, she, her. Hello, Molly, Gregor, she, her. Jessica Sue, she, her. Lily Molly, she, her. Jessica Lando, she, her. My name is Andrew Pester, and I'm here to see you on the video. My name is Stephanie Gray, she, her. Robert Morton, and I'm missing something. Oh, it's good pronouns. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Again, Mario, uh, she, her, hers, and projecting to be they because I would really like to get to the point where we're all kind of sharing a program. So I keep pushing it with my grandchildren. So. <laughs> uh, Paul Hamilton, uh, he, him, his, they. Right. <laughs> Um, she um, Great. Welcome. So there'll be people kind of filtering in and out for a few minutes. Um, welcome to the 2019 Artist Services Weekend. Um, besides the workshops that we had yesterday, which were really very impacting at the open studios today, we use Artist Services Weekend as an opportunity to share um, some information and more importantly answer some of your questions about applying to be a space grantee or an artist in residence here. So you all have packets in front of you, but without the packet, um, I'm going to give you a very brief history of the programs. Um, and if you can read the details in here and the deadlines, and I'm not going to bore you with all of that because I think I can give you more anecdotally than I can just repeat everything that's here. So, um, BAX was founded in 1991, and almost immediately we had dance space grants, and the reason that they were just dance is because we had funding for dance, it was very practical. Um, we were able to secure rehearsal hours from the New York State Council for the Arts very quickly, and therefore provide hours for choreographers to work. By 1993, we had established an artist in residence program. Initially, this was largely out of people who claimed BACs as their home. So the first two artists in residence were Reggie Wilson, who you know as a choreographer, and George Emilio Sanchez, who's a theater maker. So right from the beginning, from a discipline point of view, um, it was clear that BACs was going to be home in a variety of ways for dance, theater, and performance artists. Um, the two artists that came after that were Martha Bowers, who was doing a great deal of site work at the time, and Dean Moss, who was moving from being a dancer and a videographer to becoming a choreographer. And the reason I say that is because that is not an unusual um, travel for someone to make in becoming, um, in arriving. And that is part of what we're looking for. Where are you in your travel? And what can you share with us in this application about who you are now and who you imagine you and your work could be by being granted one of these awards, either with Space Grant or with artists in residence. Not that that is, and then I've arrived and I have no more room to grow, um, but perhaps this is a particular piece
period of time that is of great importance to you, that you feel like you have the material for, and you just need the time and support. Um, that is a great time to look at Max. Um, you can see when you leave here, there are these gorgeous uh, posters that were just arrived from the printers. This one right uh, there. One of them is right here. <laughs> um, these are all people who have been in residence here at BAC since 1993. It's in chronological order. So you see in the top left, there's George and Reggie. And in the bottom four, people who are in residence now, uh, or the bottom six, sorry. Um, some of whom have open studios today. So if you stay for the rest of the day or you were here earlier, you'll also get to see some of the work that is being um, developed here at Bax. One of the questions that gets asked a lot and is not here, so I will share it with you. This is Vanessa Dotto, who's our new executive director. Hello. Hello. What a nice question. Um, <laughs> One of the things that's asked is, well, what's best for me to apply to? Is, do I have more of a chance with the space grant or with the artist in residence? It's a great question, and I'm not going to try to push that answer off. So I'll give you some examples of some people who have been both, for example. Um, one of our artist advisors, who's a theater artist, Abigail Browdy, um, came to us originally shortly after she graduated from, from college. Um, I don't know the, the exact number of years, but she was a young artist. And she was trying to establish who she was going to be outside of college assignments. Because even if you're creating original and generative work in school, it is not the same. It's not the same as when you step out of that environment. And she had some ideas, and she had some collaborators to work with. Um, she applied for an artist in residence, and she was not awarded it. The feeling on the panel at the time was that she didn't understand her own desire in her own work at that point to enter a process in a cohort, in a group of people who were ready to share with one another because it's not just the work that you bring, it's yourselves, and we'll go into that a little bit more. Uh, the year after that, she decided to apply for a space grant, and she got it. Um, and she developed her first original work outside of school, um, and she completed it, and then she applied for an artist in residence, and she didn't get it. Um, it was at that moment, um, there were, we always have six people in our artist in residence cohort, and depending on how many first year artists in residence became second year artists in residence, people choose whether to apply for a second year or not. Sometimes someone will find themselves, well, I would really love to keep working here, but I'm going to be out on tour for three months next year. This is a New York City based residency. The amount of time that you're awarded for, we have a certain expectation that you'll be physically present. This is not a drop-in. This is not a once-a-week workshop. This is, those are some of the things that it's not. What it is is a fertile home. And in fact, she was going to be out of town a lot. She had some opportunities, which was exciting. Um, and we only had two spots that year, so the competition was quite high. The year after that, she applied, and she became an artist in residence, um, and has been, been part of the Bax family since then. She spent two years as a resident artist. Um, she had a very successful residency in many, many ways. Not just the work that she developed, but the identification of who she was as a theater artist that had taken her into the next eight years, and she's currently an artist advisor and has been assisting me in the Artist in Residence program along with Nia Love for the past two and a half years. Um, that kind of identification, not that it's for everyone, not everyone comes here and stays here for 10 years or 15 years, um, but for those of us that think about that because we've had that experience with artists, we do look 
for is this is this a moment where that kind of investment can be made? It's an investment from backs in time, in money, in space, deep commitment, deep involvement. But where will this particular artist be able to make that commitment? And will it be meaningful to them? You know, what will it mean to them? Now, we don't always know, but the questions and the applications give you that opportunity to try to make that as clear to us as possible. The question about why this particular space grant or this particular residency resonates with you is the most important question you can answer. We want to know what your project is. We want to know what your bio is. We want to know what you've done before. We want to know a timeline of your project. But what we really want to know is why you want to be here. So if you were going to spend more time on any particular question, I would advise spending time there, which doesn't answer whether you should apply for a space grant or an artist. <laughs> um, it's really hard for me to know. Space grants are unique and exciting three-month periods. They're very intense. There are 100 hours in three months. You get to share with one another. Um, actually, Ita, could you come sit with me? Yes. This is Ita Sagev. Hi. Ita is a current artist in residence. And Ita was a space grantee That's right. as well. <laughs> Um, in a couple of sentences, what's the biggest difference? Um, I mean, they're kind of vastly different, I guess, in how this place is like engaged. I would say the space grant is just about we have space to do whatever you want, kind of thing. And people come to see it, and there's sort of the luxury of having a lot of space over a condensed amount of time. Um, but there's less sort of like, you're not like opening your process up so much in the same way. So you're not like opening it up to other artists, you're not like having meetings to think about the future of the thing so much. Uh, so it's like, for me it was a really good place to just start, like a blank canvas. And then like, the artist in residence was like, okay, I spewed some things on the canvas, I think this might be like an exhibition. And how do I turn this into like a practice? Mm -hmm. But that's just where I am in my career. So. Yeah. Yeah. Conversely, there have been people who have had residencies who have come back and applied for space grants mm -hmm. because they're at a particular part of a creative practice mm -hmm. where having those three months makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And there are differences between our summer space grants and our fall space grants. The Summer Space Grant does not have a formal presentation. We have something called a show and share, um, which is about two thirds into the process where we show pieces, like uh, excerpts, of whatever you're creating for one another and with our artistic team here as well. And we do do a certain level of observation and feedback. Um, our artistic directors and advisors are available to space grantees, but it is not mandatory to take advantage of that, at least not right now. Um, could change in the future with a new artistic director. Um, but that's a particular time. In the fall, we also have full performances attached to the fall space ring. So for example, if you have a show coming up in October and you already have a permission or a a date to show something at another venue in October of 2019, you might decide to apply for a summer space grant because that would be a wonderful timeline for you to have those 100 hours in advance of a work that you're already, you know where it's going to go. If you don't, or the fall is better for you, or you're also interested in putting it up in front of an audience here at BAX, the fall might be better for you. You can't apply for both. And you can't apply for both an artist in residence and a space grant. So you do have to make a choice. Um, 
The other thing that I do want to share with you and that many people ask is that you'll see in our language um, that BACS has a commitment to developing cohorts, groups of artists, that represent underrepresented voices. Um, and that has to do with race, that has to do with gender, that has to do with sexualities. Um, and not that we ask you necessarily to reveal all of your life secrets if you don't choose to. Um, but we do find, um, and this is a commitment that we've made, and that if we don't do that, we lose sight of what this organization's mission is. And it aligns itself completely with the organization's mission. And the organization is both anti-racist and anti-oppression. Um, we do work with young people in that respect. We do work with artists. We do work within our own staffs. Um, and it is not inconsequential to us. It is at the center of who we are. Um, so I'll say that in advance as well. Um, that being said, our cohorts are both racially, gender, and sexuality diverse. Uh, but we do take that into consideration um, so that we try as best we can to um, move as far away from tokenism as we can as well. So um, that's not always easy at all. <laughs> right? Yes, not always easy. Um, but the effort is made. So I'm going to pause because I really want to spend some time, and I think your questions will reveal um, additional information. So feel free to ask them. Is the, is the, either the residency of the space, right, it could be the solo work or group work, does it have, it could be either? Yes, it could be either solo either. or group work. If you're applying, as a collaborative of a group of people working together, mm -hmm. the applications ask you to identify who those people are. Um, it does get a little tricky in the artist in residence program um, if it's a multi-member collaborative group um, because it's an intimate cohort. So if you reach the interview process, which is the third stage of the artist in residence, we would have a very frank conversation about how would you imagine who would be attending these meetings. Artists and residents meet about every six weeks for three hours. Mm -hmm. And those conversations are intimate, um, important, at the heart of the program. It's not just about the work, but about you and your practice and your hopes and your dreams and your frustrations and your solutions and your celebrations and um, so how does a multi-member collaborative fit into that we've done it mm -hmm. um, but it does take thoughtfulness mm -hmm. but you could if you have dancers that you're bringing in like a group work like you're the choreographer then you then the choreographer is the person who right who the meetings and you would be yes but it is not isolated to solo work in any of them okay. at all mm -hmm. and there's also a way I think to like I work with a very close primary collaborator, but I'm the person in residence, and that is like a dance that we navigate. <laughs> so to speak, right. But on the other hand, they've both come to meet with me, and we've yeah. had really good conversations, and right. I feel connected to both of them. Yeah, and everybody knows her. It's right. just about sort of like, yeah, how you how you frame it in a way that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. I found your story about the artist in residence, I forget their name now, but the example that you used. Abby? Yes. Um, I found that really helpful and insightful. And I'm just wondering, um, when you were talking about their initial um, application, you said something like they, they weren't initially clear yet about what kind of journey they were making as an artist or like who they were becoming. Mm -hmm. and how it's important to, to really have a very clear idea of that, especially if you're in transition or if you're in a very like, growth-filled time. So I guess my question is, around all of that with their application, did they also, 
need and when it was eventually accepted, mm -hmm. was there a very specific project in mind in addition to that that they needed to include? Like, it's a really good question. Or is it just, was it just enough to be like, this is why I'm as an artist, this is what I want to explore and like, and like really like um, sort of, you know, bring out in myself? Mm -hmm. Or is it like, yes, but also like, mm -hmm. I will be doing a 30 minute play using this technique and like A little bit of all of the above. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's hard for a panel to decipher with people that they don't necessarily know um, what an artist will be doing if that artist is not ready, which is not a negative. I mean, I can't tell you how many artists I talk to who say, you know, this application, whether it's ours or somebody else's, is asking me to talk about things I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? I'd say we're more flexible than most about that. But even within that context, the challenge for you will be to, if you can't talk about a specific project, to talk about where your practice is at this moment and how you imagine growing that practice and what your hopes are for where that might go. You need to tell us a story that we can then reflect back on our own. The panelists are just people. They, they are artists, and they are artists who have generated work. Um, so they're very sympathetic <coughs> to that process. Um, but because we don't all know each other, we don't know each other's stories, and we're reading a lot of information and looking at a lot of work samples, which we should definitely talk about before we break up today. Um, tell us your story. Tell us your, if you know why you think this is the right place to apply, and it's about developing your practice more deeply, tell us that story. Now, there is a question of what are you going to make? So that's tricky. So um, I would say if you truly don't know, then talk about where, where you're jumping off, what you hope developing this practice will open up for you, that you have thoughts about um, moving from a solo to a, a, I'm making this up, solo to a group practice because you have a curiosity about this, just tell us as, as clearly and as um, paint a picture. Don't be afraid to paint a picture. Um, and be honest, be honest and true. I was gonna say, I, I applied to the AIR program three times. The first time we had an interview, I was like in the final four. The second time, I didn't hear anything. And then the third time was the time that I became an artist in residence. Um, and I would say that this question about why Bax is really important. I'll say that Bax, for me, has been a unique space in the landscape. I just don't think there's another space quite like this, which is part of why I'm so interested in being continuing to be a part of this family and this role. Um, and some of that, so that question, and where this mission or what, where this community that is Bax might be a, in, of interest to your practice feels important, but also the structure of, if it's the artist in residence program,